it's me again here to tell you that yoga is demonic <laughs> no but uh seriously i have a lot of content on this subject already so if you haven't already watched all those videos that i've done regarding the yoga practice go check that out on my channel now now this video is going to be more so me responding to the common arguments that i get regarding this subject so i'm literally going to be reading comments that are left on my instagram specifically whenever i post a clip or just make some sort of reel about this subject it triggers people like no other and i'm not just talking about people in the world you know people that are already entrenched in new age spirituality people that don't really know jesus I don't expect them to react any other way than upset over this topic because I totally get it. I was there. For those of you that maybe you're new here, maybe this is the first time you're ever seeing me and you are like, who is this crazy girl saying yoga is demonic? Look, <laughs> I relate because for almost 10 years, I was deceived by new age spiritualism and I was a yoga teacher. I was obsessed with the yoga practice. I did it every single day. It was my life. It was a ritual. It was my therapy. It was my medicine. It was my muse. It was my religion. And such is the case for many, not just in New Age, but in Christianity too. And so something that as I've come from that world is really important to me to teach on and preach on and spread awareness on is how truly evil yoga is and i know that can sound ridiculous because as i've stated three times now i was there i was that girl seeing content like this saying this person is brainwashed they don't know what they're talking about yoga is amazing how can something that is just stretching be even remotely close to demonic? I totally understand, but I want you all to know that no one convinced me that yoga was evil. It was just Jesus and his Holy Spirit that rather convicted me that yoga was evil. And so I just pray that you would be open to receiving any rebuke or ministry that the Holy Spirit wants to facilitate in you today through hearing some of this commentary. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So, if more Christians would engage in things like yoga, it would be redeemed back to the light as it was originally intended. God is the creator, not the demonic. There is absolutely real spiritual and physical benefits to the yoga practice. It's just been warped by darkness. It's our job as his children to fill the earth and subdue it. Partnering with the demonic isn't wise. Engaging the demonic realm, carrying the light and truth is a much different thing. That's cool if you don't agree or don't want to do yoga, but walk humbly among your brothers and sisters that are called into something you're not. So this happens a lot um where people kind of like gaslight me when i speak on this subject and say things like that oh like oh you better be humble like this just isn't your calling and what i find interesting with this sort of take is that it's basically christian relativism because it's the same notion as what the world says that it's just like you can take this, you can take that, you can have this, you can have that. You can kind of just do what you want and make up your own definitions of what it means to be a Christian. Just as long as your intentions are good and like you're trying to honor the father, then it's all good, man. But like, that's just not how Christianity works. I mean, that's what sets Christianity apart from other religions um, is, is the fact that we actually walk in obedience. We follow after Christ, right? And it's not like this dogmatic, forceful tactic of control. It's just Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments and you'll walk in the light as he is the light. And 
So yeah, walking in that light, I mean, there's truth to what this comment said. That doesn't mean we engage with the darkness, but we go into these demonic realms and spread the truth and the light within that. But that doesn't mean we participate in them, right? It's like the same thing with Halloween. Halloween is a great time to evangelize. Halloween is an awesome time to pray for people, but that doesn't mean that we have to dress up and actually participate in the activity of Halloween in order to bring the light of Christ into this dark, into this dark atmosphere. And yeah, this whole idea of like, it can be redeemed, it can be redeemed. Um, now I understand that we can't, you know, there are things just living in the standard calendar year that is demonic. Like the days of the week are named after Norse gods and the calendar itself is uh, of paganism. Like it came from that. And so I can't just not go to work on Monday because, oh, that's named after a god. Like I understand that. Um, but there is, a, there is a difference between things like that where we are in the world like the bible says we are in the world not of the world and so when it comes to being in the world there are things that we cannot remove from that truth however to be of the world is a completely different thing because that is a choice okay so me just existing as a human being on a calendar schedule that is named after norse gods like i can't help that that's just that's, that's where we're at. Me practicing yoga that is rooted in Hinduism, that is literally a prayer to Hindu gods, like that is a choice. That is being of the world, not simply in it. So there's a big, big, big difference there within this argument. Um, and yeah, there are <laughs> spiritual and physical benefits to the yoga practice, but this is what I say all the time with these sorts of things that if there wasn't some sort of topical benefit or attraction to things like yoga, tarot, astrology, crystals, all the new age stuff, if there wasn't a topical attraction, then there would be no need that we would engage in it in the first place, right? If it was obvious that yoga was demonic, if it was obvious that yoga was using your body to worship Hindu gods and creating a literal portal, like a spiritual antenna with your physical being that is like moths to a flame for unclean entities, who would do it? Like, why would anyone ever do it? But that's not, that's not how the devil rolls. He doesn't make it obvious, you know? 2 Corinthians 11, 14, I always say is the thesis of the new age. Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So yoga is going to have some topical benefits, but I'm telling you the long term, it ain't there. Okay. The reason why you need yoga over and over every single day is because it is creating a physical and spiritual addiction. Your body becomes addicted to the sensations you know, within, within your muscle tissue and your fascia, but also mostly within your brain, the serotonin that's released, the dopamine that's released. And it's like a narcotic. It's like a drug you need to come back to every single day to make sure you get that hit. And then spiritually, because it is a spiritual practice, I say all the time, yoga is not a physical practice with spiritual benefits. It's a spiritual practice with physical benefits. And so because it is a spiritual practice, yes, there is a spiritual consequence to that. And it's going to feel good because again, why would a demon show up and make you feel bad upon entry? No, they're careful. They're wise. They're patient. They know what they're doing. However, so that you keep coming back for more and you give them more legal right to your physical body, to your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. It's gonna, they're gonna cultivate it in such a way that keeps you coming. And that's the thing, yoga was designed to do this. Yoga was designed to commune with little g pagan gods and goddesses, over 33 million in the Hindu, in the Hindu religion. Yoga is Hindu. 
to its core. Like you cannot divorce what it is from what you want it to be. We're only on the first comment, guys. Next comment says, imagine believing this crap and being guilt tripped over stretching and breathing exercises. Holy hell, get a life. Um, so I wanted to share this one because this is obviously, I think, coming from, I mean, I, I would hope, coming from someone that is not a follower of Christ. But the reason I wanted to include it is because the reaction that I get when I speak against yoga, more than astrology, more than tarot, more than Reiki, more than any other new age modality, ideology or practice, pure rage, like pure, unfiltered rage, just nasty insults, defamation, slander, I've been called the R word. I've been told I need a therapist. I've been told that I'm schizophrenic. Like you name it, I've been called it. This isn't like a woe is me thing because truly I do not care. It's an observation that there is no other practice or religion like yoga that facilitates such a response in people. Hmm. It's almost like there's a spiritual influence behind it that is intrinsically evil or something. So, you see, the reason why I wanted to mention that is because comments like this, comments like that, it, it tells on itself. It tells on itself because if you're practicing yoga, if you're practicing yoga, why are you practicing? To be Zen for light, love, meditation, spiritual enlightenment, peace, joy, like all these things. But then you go to someone's comment section and you get so triggered by what you're perceiving as an incorrect opinion that they have that the yoga practice is evil. And you literally lack the self-control. You cannot tame your tongue that you have to go off on them and call them names. It's almost like the yoga is not working or it is working because it's really not peaceful or joyful or enlightening. It's almost like it is yoking to unclean spirits. So that's just an observation and I want to with that, give you a word of encouragement for those of you that are watching this because I get asked all the time, like, how can I, how can I talk to this person? They get so mad at me. I just want you to know that when the Holy Spirit shows up, unholy spirits get angry. And there's really, there's nothing you can do about it, truly. You got to just keep speaking truth and speaking it in love, but speaking it honestly. Remember, love is not passivity. Love is not tolerance and live and let live. Love is, here's the truth, take it or leave it. I'm still gonna love you. I'm not gonna support that, but I'm gonna love you and I'm gonna tell you the truth because I love you. And what you choose to do with that truth, that's on you. But how someone responds to you, it's not you they're responding to, it's the conviction that they don't have a word for that they're responding to. It's the unclean spirits they are yoking within the yoga practice, having a reaction to the Holy Spirit, calling it out. So there's nothing you can do about that. You just gotta let go and let God. So you literally can't stretch without worshiping the God of destruction. Also, none of the people talking in this video have any business using terms like objective truth to describe their points. Um, so what this person is referring to is mine and Nayla and Brian's two-part Dark Truth About Yoga series. As I mentioned, I have a couple videos on my channel. I will make sure they're linked in the description, exposing the yoga practice. It's probably over five or six hours worth of information that I definitely recommend that you check out. Um, and yeah, we have no business allegedly using terms like objective truth. So to that, I just want to say, 
this is it's never our opinion it's never my opinion in which these things come i mean if you literally go on google for like 30 seconds and you look up the roots of yoga it's hindu to its core that's what it is that is the curation that is the cultivation that is the design that is what it is it is a byproduct of hinduism and it is its own religion okay the yoga practice so that's not my opinion that's not a subjective train of thought that is literally objective i have had hindu people comment on my stuff and you know obviously they agree with me because or, i'm sorry obviously they disagree with me because they're hindu and i'm christian so we have very different beliefs however it's really interesting because the hindu people actually in a weird way tend to support my work when i come out and say stuff like this and the reason for that is because they are so offended by how the Western civilization has completely whitewashed their religion and has turned yoga into just Lululemon smoothie world or just something that I do because it feels good because I'm just a, a, an Instagram influencer or XYZ, right? We, we've completely just made it this thing that, you know, spirituality, take it or leave it. It's just stretching. That makes people in the Hindu religion infuriated. Why? Because it's a part of their religion. Because yoga is Hindu. Because they use it as prayer. Because they use it as worship. Because they use it to yoke to their 33 million gods and goddesses and to pay homage to those gods and goddesses. That's not subjective, my friends. That's objective. That's just the reality of it. And yeah, you know, this is another common thing, right? Oh, now stretching is demonic. It's like people will always hear what you're not saying. When have I ever exclaimed that stretching is demonic when have i ever suggested that one should not exercise i have not in my life ever stated that in fact if you know me and you know me personally you know that i am a huge proponent for taking care of oneself because our body as a born again blood-bought believer in jesus christ our body is a temple of the holy spirit and we have a responsibility to steward that well so I absolutely believe in exercise and nutrition as a part of that stewardship. However, yoga is not just stretching. Yoga uses stretching as the physical modal modality in order to facilitate the spiritual aspects of it. So they're very different things. They are very different things, okay? There is a point to that I want to make, but I think it comes back to another one of the comments. As someone with chronic back pain due to scoliosis, I will continue doing yoga and worshiping the Lord. Thanks. So here we have just a total unwillingness to hear anything that is being said because, well, this is how it is for me. And now I want to be totally real here. This person and this mindset you are directly making someone or something responsible for your healing. You are relying on a source outside of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, outside of his Holy Spirit to heal you. Oh, Angela, am I saying you should never take medicine? No, don't again hear what I'm not saying. But when you have this mindset of this helps me this is what's responsible for making me feel better and that thing is coming above jesus or you justify it because well i love jesus so he's okay with it no either you're making that thing lord over him or you're making yourself lord over him when you have that mindset and look i just want i'm not being mean i'm just being real he is our healer. His name is Jehovah Rapha. 
What does your prayer life look like? Has someone laid hands on you and prayed for that scoliosis to go in Jesus' name for relief of that pain? Because my Bible says just touching the hem of his garment heals you. You don't need the yoga practice to heal you. And the Lord would never offer you a modality of healing that is rooted in paganism. So that was not the instruction of the Lord. Maybe, again, not saying don't take medicine. Maybe the Holy Spirit says, yes, take an Advil today if you have a headache. That's fine. But if the Advil is rooted in Hindu worship of the god Shiva, that's probably not the Holy Spirit encouraging you to do that. I mean, to talk about pharm pharmaceuticals, pharmacia, totally different thing for another different day. Let's not even go there. But you hear what I'm saying, right? So that's not the Lord that's encouraging you to heal through the yoga practice. That's the unholy spirits that love when you use the yoga practice as your means of healing because it gives them access to you. They just need your agreement. They don't care. You know, the devil doesn't care if it's same with anything, not just yoga. The devil doesn't care if you go to church Sunday morning, so long as you go out drinking Saturday night, right? I mean, it's the same thing with the yoga practice. The, the devil doesn't care if you read scripture before you stretch in the yoga practice or after or during. He just cares if he can get your body on the mat because that is the access point. That is the agreement. We literally bond with the enemy when we open doors through sin, through idol worship, through witchcraft. Yoga is witchcraft, y'all. I mean, again, that's not a subjective statement. That is objectively true. It is a physical divination practice by its very design. No one can monopolize a body posture. Fear God, read the Bible, love Jesus, and obey his leading. He will surely take us in himself, the living truth. Don't listen to somebody else just because they speak what you like, even if it's true. I'm not sure that part made sense. Filtering it in intimacy with God will press truth into your being, not listening to other people, no matter how good intentions they have. The irony in this comment in and of itself as I'm reading it is just, hopefully it's not lost on you because it's not lost on me, right? They're saying, don't listen to other people. Don't, like, why even comment? Um, but what I wanted to make note of is that no one can monopolize a body posture. So, okay. It is true that if you are a born again, blood bought believer, the devil cannot own your body. However, as I just mentioned, you can give him access and legal right to you. This is biblical. The word of God says that we can actually quench the Holy Spirit through a practice of evil, which is why in the word it says to abstain from even the appearance of evil, like let alone doing something like abstain from the very appearance of it because you can quench the Holy Spirit within you because that's what evil does. Okay. Evil is not just a thing. It's not just a concept. It's a dark force. It is a source and a spirit outside of God. It is literally outside of God. And so that is the thing that quenches the Holy Spirit. So when you willingly participate in a Hindu practice, in a Hindu religion, you willingly put your body in postures, okay? to pay homage to Hindu and Hindu gods, whether or not that's your intention is totally irrelevant because that's what it is doing, okay? When you put your body in those postures, the devil monopolizes on that. 
because it's the legal right. This isn't a matter of like the devil owns, I'm sitting cross-legged right now. Like, am I possessed by a demon? No, I'm, I'm just sitting here. And that's the thing, right? You can't, you can't unintentionally do yoga because you have to actually step into the practice. You know what you're doing when you do yoga. It's yoga. Stretching your arms above your head is not yoga. Like waking up in the morning and having a good stretch. That's not yoga. You know what you are doing when you do the yoga practice. It's like you just, you can't accidentally use a Ouija board, right? It's the same thing. Yoga is like your body becomes a Ouija board. I always say it's like Ouija Twister, that game where you like put your hands down and twist and contort in all sorts of ways. It's like Ouija Twister. So just to be clear on that, no one can monopolize a body posture. Sure, but um, yoga was created for such, for such a for such a purpose so it's like okay let me let me think about what i'm trying to say here or give a good example right well okay so a pen for instance like if i pick up a pen this pen was not created to write spells or to encant the devil but if i use that pen to write spells and encant the devil guess what guess what it's gonna do it's i mean it's pretty clear Okay, the curation, the cultivation, the sequences behind the postures in conjunction with yoga itself being what it is, and the flow all together, the spirit behind it, because you can't separate it. That is what the enemy monopolizes on. Not just you stretching your arms up in the air. It's the yoga practice itself and the body postures facilitated within the practice, within the context of the practice, okay? I am sure that the true monotheistic God also loves if you respect your physical body as well as your spirit, if you are physically active in order to have an experience here on earth with a healthy body and mind. Yes and amen. This, again, people have this idea in their heads that when I talk about yoga, that I'm somehow just throwing out all exercise in general. And it's like, that's absolutely not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, let's not do an exercise that worship is, worships Hindu gods. Like, let's not do an exercise that is a part of a religious practice that is entirely antithetical to Christ. Let's not do an exercise that is literally a spiritual portal for unclean spirits to wreak havoc in our lives. Like, that's just my suggestion. And again, there are, you know, the, it's, the reaction is visceral in response to the yoga practice. It's so nasty. And people act like there's no other way to exercise in the at, at all, ever. It's like spin bikes don't exist. I actually am incapable of walking out my front door and taking a five mile walk. It's it's just the yoga mat. That's the only way I can exercise. It's like, guys, come on, come on. No one is saying you can't move your body. No one is saying that you can't be healthy. It's quite the opposite. Be healthy, move your body, exercise. Play pickleball or something. I don't think that's demonic. But I'm willing to stand corrected if someone has any information on that. I appreciate your post. However, it has been brought to my attention that there is a pose in which one lies flat on the floor. Would that mean we are inadvertently doing yoga while laying down? Also, it's so hard to find stretching videos that do not have yoga poses. So frustrating. So I so obviously wasn't left with any sort of ill uh, undertone to it. I just wanted to address it because it's a good question, right? So what this person is referring to is the corpse pose. And need I say more? I mean, it's called the corpse pose. So there is something very different from the corpse pose versus laying down on your back to go to sleep, take a nap, whatever, right? Because again, it is the, it is the practice itself. You cannot accidentally do yoga. 
You can't just, it's like I'm laying down so I'm corpse pose. No, it's like you did a yoga practice. You made the conscious decision to participate in yoga. You go through the whole flow and then the uh, vinyasa always ends with the corpse pose, which is just, how lovely is that? It's like you do yoga and then you end up as a corpse. Um, but, but, but that's the thing, right? Think about even just the very language of what I'm saying. Like the corpse pose. And I understand this. Look, I was a yoga teacher. I did the yoga teacher training. I know what it's supposed to symbolize, which is like, of course, a counterfeit sal salvation thing, because it's like you're born again when you get up off the mat. And you're supposed to be in this corpse pose and totally empty your mind and all these things. You know what happens when you empty your mind, guys? You're not supposed to have an empty mind. This Bible says have a sober mind. An empty mind is not a sober mind. An empty mind is a susceptible mind. An empty mind is a vacant mind. You're not supposed to be vacant. You're supposed to be sober minded and vigilant. Vigilant, not vacant. A vacant mind is an empty house that Matthew 7 says an unclean spirit sees swept up and in order and comes back with seven more way evil than before. So that is what the yoga practice is encouraging you to do in this corpse pose. Literally die to yourself in the sense that your mind becomes vacant. You become void. So in your vacancy, you become a vessel. Y'all, you become a vessel. And scripture is very clear that we are to take thoughts captive to Christ. It doesn't say empty your mind of all thoughts. No, it says take those thoughts in obedience to Christ. Renew your mind. Don't empty your mind. You renew your mind. Like these are biblical concepts and there's a reason why practices like yoga are based on the very antithesis of all of that. Why everything is flipped upside down because it's a counterfeit and because it's inviting a very, very different source, a very different spirit by process of elimination. If it's not Holy Spirit, it's an unholy spirit. And I'm sure you can guess who's coming in through the corpse pose. Oh, a spirit of death. Like you don't want to be doing this, but all that to be said, no, you can't accidentally do yoga. You can't unknowingly do yoga. My goal is to never enable guilt or paranoia with these sorts of things because God has not given us a spirit of fear. In fact, it lends to what I just discussed, vigilance. It's all about vigilance. This is about being wise as serpents and innocent as doves which means we understand the wiles of the enemy, lest he not take advantage. But then we're innocent in the sense that we don't participate in these things. We have no parts. We abstain from the even appearance of evil. Okay. We abstain from even the appearance of evil. My favorite one, my favorite argument. First Corinthians eight. That is the most common rebuttal that I get. Food that is offered and dedicated to idols and other gods is okay to eat for the strong believer. It is not okay for the weak believer. It is still food at its core. You cannot be accidentally, accidentally bewitched as a believer. Go use a Ouija board and then tell me if that's true. Don't actually do that, but go use a Ouija board and tell me if that's true. Stretching dedicated to other gods is still just stretching at its core. No. But if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then don't. See, this is another way people like to gaslight with the yoga argument because of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians. He's, she's saying, food that is offered and dedicated to idols and other gods is okay to eat for the strong believer but not for the weak believer. So this is how people inadvertently are telling me that my faith is weak. Like I'm not- I'm not strong enough in the faith to actually step into the yoga practice. 
That's how they use 1 Corinthians 8 against me, right? Totally, conveniently, never adding in just a few verses down from that part where Paul gives the big, oh, but, however, however, if you doing this thing, eating the unclean meat, causes the weaker believer to stumble, then don't do it at all. They never mentioned that part. I wonder why. Because it completely dismantles their argument, maybe? Because then they can't stand on the proverbial pride of, well, I'm just a stronger believer. Well, okay, if you are so rooted in your faith, then you should have the reverence for your weaker brother or sister to stop doing yoga then. Because you know what? You could be a stumbling block for them because what? They see you doing yoga. Maybe they're very new to the faith and they see you doing yoga. They go to a yoga studio. Well, I saw my favorite Christian influencer doing it, so I guess it's not really a big deal that they have a Buddha head up in the corner. I guess it's not really a big deal that they have these crystals out and that they want to do a sound bath at the end of class. So-and-so does it. Right, because if you want to use the 1 Corinthians 8 argument, you better do the whole verse. And you better be prepared to have a response for what the verse is actually saying. Paul is saying, don't violate your own conscience, but worse, because you're supposed to love your neighbor. Don't violate someone else's. And for the record, this has nothing to do with me because I'm not weak in my faith. It's not because I'm weak in my faith that I choose not to do yoga. It's because I'm strong in my faith and I don't need yoga and I don't want yoga because I know what it is. And I love the Lord and I want to honor him the way he wants to be honored. You know, scripture actually says God says himself, do not worship him as the pagans worship their gods. So to that point, the whole argument of, well, I can worship God when I do yoga. I don't have to worship a pagan deity. Biblically, no, you can't do that either. So there's really no leg to stand on for this whole 1 Corinthians 8 thing at all. Not to even mention the fact that divination, again, yoga's physical divination, divination and offering your own body as an idol, as a sacrifice to idols rather, is a totally different apples and oranges sort of thing to what Paul's actually talking about in context, which is meat. Like, Eating food offered to idols is a totally different can of worms than using your own body as an offering to idols. And yeah, stretching is just stretching. But again, stretching within the context of yoga is not just stretching. You are an offering. So... I know we talk a lot about that particular verse in the Dark Truth About Yoga part two-part series, so go check that out. Um, something I actually responded to this person with. I said to them, applying this verse is oil and water. A more applicable verse would be 1 Corinthians 10.21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. So I think that applies a lot more heavily than the 1 Corinthians 8. Okay. Someone says, to be clear, if you believe yoga is just stretching, breathing deeply and calibrating your nervous system, then that's all you're actually doing. Okay, so... I like to use the Ouija board as an example because I think it's the most uh, starstruck kind of imagery. So if I believe in all my heart and soul that I am using a Ouija board to communicate with a, a St. Paul, let's just use him as an example. St. Paul, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. 
Does that mean that a demon can't pretend to be St. Paul through the Ouija board? Even though I am fully committed with the intention to just talk to St. Paul, does that mean that a demon isn't going to capitalize on the fact that I am participating in witchcraft? That, that he's not going to capitalize on the legal right that I have given him through my participation in witchcraft in order to obtain entry. The road to hell is paved in good intentions, right? There's a reason why scripture says, do not trust your own heart because it is deceitful. There's a reason scripture says to submit to the Lord God in all of your ways, not just some, but all. It's because our own heart is wicked and sick and we can't know it. And so you cannot be your best barometer of truth. Like you cannot be the barometer of what is and is not acceptable. You have to let the Bible be that for you. Like his word has to come before your feelings. And if your feelings don't align with his word, then you reject those feelings and you take it captive to Christ. He knows better than you. He is God. You are not God. That is why we need a savior to begin with, right? That's why we need Jesus to begin with. So no, it's not just stretching and breathing deeply and calibrating your nervous system because that's what you want it to be any more than me using a Ouija board to talk to St. Paul because that's what I want to do would be that. Like, it's just, you can't divorce what it is because of what you want it to be. Okay, yoga is evil. I appreciate the concern, but I do yoga stretches to help with pain in my body after my physical education classes, and they have been super therapeutic. Uh, the body was made for the Lord, and any movement I do with it if my heart is oriented towards him, is for him. Okay. So, scripture is clear that sex between a man and a woman who are married in holy covenant and matrimony is holy. Okay. Scripture is clear that sex between man and wife is holy. Scripture is also clear that sex between man and wife who are not married is fornication, therefore unholy. So tell me, if any movement you do with your body, if it's just for the Lord, if it's just your intention to be for the Lord is holy, then how do you explain fornication? Because sex in and of itself is a very holy thing within the context of marriage because that's God's design and God's order. So the same movement is holy within the context of God's order and unholy outside of that. The same is true for stretching, okay? Unholy within the context of yoga because that is outside God's order as a pagan practice, worshiping Hindu gods and goddesses, paying homage to them, embodying their essence and their qualities, yoking to those spirits, and then stretching is holy within the context of simple exercise and good stewardship of the temple of the Holy Spirit that is the physical body. So you see how your intention is irre irrelevant here. The intention is completely irrelevant. It is the context that matters here. So not all movement is holy movement, even if it's the same movement. It's all about the context of the movement. It's all about the spirit behind the movement. And I'm not talking about the disposition. I'm not talking about your disposition or your intention of the movement. I'm talking about the actual spirit behind it. The spirit behind fornication is a spirit of disobedience, like Ephesians says. Spirit behind sex between a man and wife would be the Holy Spirit because that's what he designed. Spirit behind yoga would be the pagan gods and goddesses of Hinduism. 
Spirit behind just a stretch. That's just the Holy Spirit. So, again, context matters. Context absolutely matters. Not all movement is holy movement. Your intentions are just irrelevant all the time. Maybe your God is the evil God. Maybe Hindus got it right. Maybe there's only one true God with a capital G and that's God, the all that is, probably doesn't have a huge ego, isn't jealous, doesn't have human-like personality traits that we humans ascribe to it. God created personality, not the other way around. Um, I have a relationship with God. I revere Jesus' teachings. Cannot get on board with a small-minded dogmatism and othering, putting your own beliefs above others and damning them to hell for their spiritual practices. All seems so incredibly small-minded, judgmental, hypocritical, and arrogant. Live and let live. Be humble. You might be wrong. So, yeah, I'm all for being wrong. Are you? Because it doesn't sound like it. Uh, I'm all for being wrong because the thing is, I'm not God. This is not about myself. This is not about my own beliefs or my own moral compass. This is about God. What he says is right and wrong. What is objective Okay, so this is actually in a strange way like a backhanded compliment because whenever anyone calls me small-minded or narrow-minded, it's just a reminder that Jesus himself says the road is narrow that leads to life and broad is the road that leads to destruction. So this person that quote-unquote reveres the teachings of Jesus, I wonder if they revere that part that life is actually found at the end of the narrow road and that few will get there and that destruction is the broad road. Destruction is the road of live and let live. I don't know how we came to this point in society where we think that live and let live is love because it's not. If I let my daughter, once she starts toddling around, put her hand on the stove because I'm trying to teach her to live and let live, that's not loving. That's abuse, that's neglect. If God had a live and let live mentality for his creation, that would literally be abuse. He sets boundaries and order and rules, it's not a bad word, in place out of love because he is not neglectful. He is not abuseful. And it has nothing to do with him having a huge ego. And it has everything to do with him being love. God is love. God is love. And he is a jealous God indeed. You know why he's jealous? Because he loves you. Because he is obsessed with you. Because he wants to protect you. He wants what's best for you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to provide for you. And he loves you so much that you are all he's about and he just wants you to be all about him. Think about how you get zealous for a lover. You don't want them to love anybody else. You don't want to have a, a polyistic relationship with the person that you love more than anything in the world. No, you want that monotheistic relationship or that monogamous relationship. Just like God wants you to have a monotheistic relationship with him because he is the monotheistic God. He is. So could I be wrong? Sure. I'm wrong about a lot of things, but is God wrong? No, God is not wrong. And the reason people are drawn to the Hindu beliefs of just all of this subjectivity is because it indulges the carnality of man. It indulges the, well, I can just call my own shots. And then what you do is you say things like, well, I have a relationship with God, but it's completely subjective. That's making you God. That is actually being Lord of your own life because you are the one setting the definitions and the standards for what that relationship looks like instead of letting God be the one to do that. And he does it. He has done it through his word, through his mandate with Jesus Christ and the sacrifice and what that means and what that is, that reconciliation for you because God so loved the world. Not because God was so sick of the world. God was so fed up with the world. God was so <laughs> egotistical 
over the world. No, God so loved the world. So yeah, he got it right. He continues to get it right. That's why we need him because we are the ones that get it wrong. Amen. The Lord revealed himself to me during a Kundalini practice. I gave my life to him in that moment and never looked back. I threw away all deities, Kundalini yoga, etc. Jesus is real and he uses all things for good. So I just wanted to mention this because little, you know, sunshine in the darkness, but no, I got a lot of really good testimonies coming out of this stuff. I have people all the time tell me that they threw away their yoga mats, that they stopped doing yoga and that they got free from through deliverance from unclean spirits that came in through the yoga practice. And now they're walking in freedom and they're walking in truth and they're walking in life and all the bondage and all this stuff, all the anxiety and the depression that they were using the yoga practice to work through was actually gone now because they threw away the yoga practice. I get this all the time. And so I just want to be clear. It's not always all bad stuff. It's not always all rebuttals. There's a lot of testimony in there too. There's a lot of freedom in there. I'm a story of that freedom, but it's not just me. There's so much freedom that comes from actually being liberated through Christ Jesus and letting him take over and yielding to his spirit and just surrendering all this stuff, just putting it on the altar at the foot of the cross and saying, Lord, if it's not yours, I don't want it. Okay, so there's so much good in there. There's so much good in there. And I love what this person said that they were literally in the middle of this practice when Jesus revealed himself to them. And so I want to say to you, whoever it is that's watching this, that has a loved one that's entrenched with a new age spirituality and they do yoga, they're obsessed with yoga, they're obsessed with crystals, whatever. I just want you to know that Jesus can show up right then and there too. And it's your responsibility and your privilege to intercede for that. Pray that the Lord would reveal them, would reveal himself. Pray that the Lord would reveal himself to them in the middle of that yoga practice and that he would convict them right then and there that what they're doing is wrong, right? Like you have that authority. The word of God says you can come boldly before the throne of grace, that you can ask, actually ask God for these things as his child. He's your father. He wants to give them to you. He hears the prayers of the righteous. It is not his will that anyone should perish. And he is jealous for that person. He doesn't want them doing that. So he's going to listen to your prayers and honor your prayers. You just got to be praying. Don't give up hope. I don't care how far gone they seem because I was that far gone girl. I was there and my best friend prayed for me for two decades with the end not in sight for many years. She couldn't see how that story was going to end, but you know what? She continued to contend for me in the secret place. And God is faithful. And he didn't reveal himself to me during a yoga practice, but he did for this person. He did for this person. He convicted them right then and there and they threw it away. So yes, that's what I love about Jesus. Uh, well, one of the many things is that even in your sin, he'll show up there. Not by any means endorsing sin, but I'm saying God is boundless. Like he will show up right then and there. He's not going to refuse to meet you. He's actually going to meet you right where you are. And the thing about it is he's going to meet you right where you are and then just love you way too much to leave you there. He's the God that saves, delivers, heals. He is the God of salvation. Hallelujah. What else do we got? Someone says, okay, we need to stop being Pharisees with all the do's and don'ts and makes, and this makes you a good slash saved Christian. And this makes you a bad slash unsaved Christian. We're the new era of Pharisees. We just need to love God and others as much as we love ourselves, which should be a lot. Healthy love is not listing all the things people are doing wrong. I feel like a lot of the time it's lost on people that Jesus was flipping tables and that he was calling the Pharisees brood vipers and that he was telling them that they are sons of the devil. Now, was he saying any of that to be mean or unloving? No, he was actually saying it because he is loving. But you know what is a characteristic of his love? 
is justice. And injustice results in his righteous anger. And that is all encompassing of his love. Again, love is not live and let live. Love is not tolerance. Love is not inclusivity. Love is truth. Corinthians says that love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. So if someone is doing wrong, you don't rejoice in that. You don't let them do it because you're trying to be inclusive and just live and let live, man. Everyone has their own relationship with God. No, you don't rejoice in that. You actually call that out because you're calling them forward to what is true in love. And sometimes that means flipping a table because they're defiling the place, the house of God. So yeah, I'm here to flip some tables for all these Christians that are saying that they're doing yoga and worshiping the Lord because you are not, you are not. Stop defiling my father's house with those words. You are not worshiping God when you participate in the yoga practice. And I love you enough to say that because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's all about him. Look, I'm concerned enough about the fact that you are yoking to pagan deities. And I want to be clear, that is what you are doing. That is what the word yoga means. It means to yoke, unionize with the divine. Okay. But it's not the divine God of the Bible. It is the little G gods the principalities and heavenly realms that Ephesians talks about. It's the cast down gods that Psalms 82 talks about that are setting themselves up for condemnation and judgment. It's those gods, the disembodied spirit gods that want to overtake you. Demons that want to rule you. They're looking for a body to torment, to steal, kill, and destroy because they don't have their own. So I'm concerned enough about that for your own sake. Because I love you and I want you to have freedom in Christ. Because that's what he died for you to have. And whatever it is you think that you need the yoga practice for, I'm telling you, you don't need it. Because you have him. And when you have him, he is all you need. He is sufficient literally says in scripture, his grace is sufficient in your weakness. It's not his grace plus whatever else I feel like doing, whatever other practices that I get a endorphin hit from are sufficient in my weakness. No, it's his grace. So yeah, I'm concerned enough about you. Trust me, I am. Because I know firsthand the consequence of this practice. I know exactly what it leads to, what it lends to, and what is what it's doing to you are doing through you. I know better than anyone. I had those spirits. I had to get delivered radically as a Christian. I was born again for over a year and I had to get delivered. I had demons cast out of me from the yoga practice that I was doing before I got saved. And that was no joke. Those spirits were no joke. But aside from my concern for you, I just love the Lord, okay? I love Jesus because he saved my life, because he is the King of Kings, because he's the Lord of Lords, because God is a good father and he continues to show up in faithfulness, love and truth in my life time and time again. He has never let me down. He has just outpoured love and compassion and grace that I never deserved, mercy that I never deserved. And he just continues to just love me and love me and meet me and love me and sanctify me and grow me and talk to me and just be with me. I love him so much. So as concerned as I am for you, this is about him. Because practicing yoga is spitting in God's face. I'm going to be honest. I don't care how dramatic that sounds. I'm sure it sounded very dramatic when Jesus said, you brood vipers to the Pharisees. So you want to talk about 
<laughs> you want to talk about really being a Pharisee? They weren't interested in their relationship with God as he defined it. They were interested in upholding an idea of God that made them comfortable, that was in adherence to their traditions to their man-made structures, to their routine, to their comfortability, that when the Messiah got in their face, they didn't know what to do with him. And they called him blasphemous for being who he was, which was the God they were waiting for the whole time. So that's really what a Pharisee was. Pharisees blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Pharisees undermine Jesus and his commandments. Pharisees stick to what is comfortable and carnal and routine and structured. And by their own definitions and standards rather than God's. So... A true Pharisee, I guess you could say in a lot of ways, would be someone who is a Christian and practicing yoga because they're saying, well, this is what my God looks like. This is what my God says versus here's what God actually says, who God actually is, what he actually requires of you. And it comes through the relationship. A Pharisee uses a relationship, I use in air quotes, with God as justification for doing what they do, even if it defies him. The Pharisees were using their relationship to God as justification for crucifying the Messiah that they were waiting for. So, no, no one here speaking out against yoga is acting pharisaical it's just acting in obedience to the Lord, to Christ. It's not being entrenched in the carnality or the comfortability of what we want and what we think God should be, what we want him to be, what we're expecting him to be, and just submitting to what he is and what he says and what that entails and understanding what he's really set us free from and yielding to that. Because you see, being free in Jesus doesn't mean you're free to the world. It means you're free from the world. So people use Christian liberty as an excuse why they can justify yoga. Well, exactly what you're saying here, like that I'm free in Christ, that's why I can practice yoga because I'm the stronger believer, right? Back to 1 Corinthians 8. I'm so strong in my faith that I can practice yoga. No, Christian liberty, which I don't know who decided that was a term, but Christian liberty is not a hall pass to do whatever you want. Christian liberty is just being free of the bondage that doing whatever you want holds you in. Because let's be honest, it's captivating to do what you want. It's indulgent to do what you want. That's not freedom. A lack of self-control, a lack of discipline, which is a fruit of the spirit, it's not freedom by any means. And then saying, well, I'm a Christian, so I have freedom. Mm, that's not how that works. That's the enemy that's trying to be a riddler and talk you into it he's the tempter he is a liar jesus says that his native tongue is lies okay christian liberty is not freedom to do whatever you want christian liberty is being free from what you want because really all you want is jesus It's being free from the flesh, not free to indulge the flesh. 
which is how a lot of people use it. Now, am I saying that we have to sit inside with our sitting on our hands with gray walls and just in a box all day? No, not at all. That's not freedom either. Being paranoid isn't freedom. Being scared isn't freedom. Being free is freedom. So test every spirit like the word of God says. Is it producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Joy, gentleness, peace, love. Does it yield to his commands that Jesus says you will follow if you love him? Just listen to him. Listen to his voice because his sheep know his voice. And understand that if you feel if you feel like resistance to disengaging from the yoga practice, then that's something to really get curious about and to check in with yourself and to check in with the Lord about because if you feel that resistance to disengage from the yoga practice, then that lends to captivity, that lends to bondage. And that's not freedom. That's not freedom. Anything you can't let go of is holding you. So if it was really just stretching, then why can't you let go? If it was really just something you do to feel better in your physical, why can't you let go? It's because there's a spiritual component behind it. And it's not a spiritual component that you get to decide it is. It's the spiritual component that it is objectively. And that is pagan, which is demonic, okay? So I hope this video was helpful for somebody. Maybe you're that person on the fence. I prayed before I recorded this that this video would reach that person who has seen all my content, who has seen other people's content about yoga, has prayed about it, and has been like a hop, skip, and jump away from just needing one more thing to solidify that they're going to cease. And so if that's you, I want you to let me know. I want you to message me. I want you to comment and say, this is the one. This did it. I'm done. I'm laying it at the altar. And I want you to know that God sees that and he honors you and he loves you. It has nothing to do with me boasting on my content. It's everything to do with how the Lord has convicted your heart and you are obedient. And he's going to reward you for that. And there's so much freedom that comes from that. So congratulations if that's you. And if this is you watching because maybe you have those loved ones and you just you just watch this stuff because you want to better understand, then as I already said, keep praying for them. Continue to contend for them. Don't underestimate the power of intercessory prayer because it's a part of my testimony. And I get so many messages from people saying that, you know, they wish XYZ loved one would have the same kind of radical transformation I had into that. I say, y'all, my best friend prayed for me. Like I may not have had that transformation if not for her prayers. So pray for your loved ones. And yeah, let me know in the comments. I've never done this before where I just like read off comments. Um, let me know if this is something that you'd like to see more of. If I could go through some of the comments section on popular hot new age topics and just sort of make an apologetic sort of response to some of those really common objections with not just yoga but astrology maybe just anything so let me know in the comments your thoughts on this um as like a sort of little series that maybe we could start doing together and be sure to like the video, subscribe to Heaven and Healing Podcast, follow me on Instagram. I will link the yoga videos that I have on my channel in the show notes. If you have not seen those yet, check out that description. Also down in the description are ways to support Heaven and Healing. So if you're blessed by this content, please pray about becoming a monthly partner to support us and to bless us financially and to continue this work that we're doing for the kingdom of God. Uh, you can also just sow a one-time seed, whatever the Lord is leading you to do means so much to us be covering us in prayer and yeah love you guys as always don't forget to check back in thursday night 6 p.m central time where we do weekly live streams 
Love you all so much. And Jesus loves you. So take good care.